Never in a million years did I imagine that during the times of this great pandemic, no pun intended, but never in a million years did I imagine that we would see some pest just emerge out of nowhere to start giving YouTubers trouble. You see, I know you're familiar with the story of this little bratty, ratty panda that came out and started coming up with versions of, uh, you know, things such as YouTubers being incentivized in order to promote Workhorse and Lordstown Motors in their videos. Now, this is complete garbage, and I can tell you that it's garbage because I myself stood accused by this zoo animal, this creature that has no life and has to stay on the internet and cause trouble for everybody, or at least try to. Now, I know you're already aware that this panda came out with a short report, but this panda didn't profit off of that short report. This panda got caught with his pants down and no toilet paper, trying to take a crap in your bathroom. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I found a connection between this panda and somebody else. A connection that nobody else is talking about. A connection to another short seller that tried to short Workhorse earlier this year. Back just like four to five months ago. And in this video, we're going to talk about this other short seller. And we're going to talk about the connection. So don't go anywhere because we're going to be starting right now. Hey, what's going on? It's Pat from Top Ticker Trades. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to grow your wealth through investing and trading stocks in the market, make sure you start right now by subscribing and tapping that bell so you never miss a thing. I'll see you in the video. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to yet another workhorse video. Dang, does it feel good saying that again. So, <clears throat> here's the deal. I was on uh, Fuzzy Panda's Twitter account, or Twitter page, or whatever you want to call it. And to my surprise, guess what I found? Yeah, you're staring at it. You see that right there? That says Nate Anderson. Now, why would Nate Anderson be sitting there tagging the Fuzzy Panda? The Fuzzy Panda short. Well... Only one explanation that I can think of. Maybe somehow this uh, Nate Anderson is linked to the Fuzzy Panda. Now, for those of you who don't know who Nate Anderson is, you should really check out some more videos on my channel because I've got several on, his, on the topic of the short seller Nate Anderson, who is the CEO of Hindenburg Research a short seller research company that a lot of people consider to be reputable. I, on the other hand, think it's a garbage short company that pretty much, yeah, got lucky a handful of times, and the rest of the time, he does stupid crap, just like this fuzzy panda, to try to short companies for no reason at all, with made-up or over-exaggerated claims. Now, I've proven this time and time again, and like I said, my channel has the videos to prove it. Nate Anderson, from what I've seen, has had his butt handed to him on more than one occasion, on multiple occasions. And Workhorse is a company that did this to Anderson just a few months ago in July. This is something that I haven't heard any other YouTuber mention yet, but back in July, Anderson or Hindenburg Research, or at least under the name Hindenburg Research, tried to short Workhorse stock. Matter of fact, he claimed that there was an immediate 50% downside to Workhorse stock. And what happened? It's more like there was an immediate 50% upside. So, I know he got his butt handed to him then. I know his feelings probably got hurt. I'm sure he cried himself to sleep every night. 
and I'm sure his bank account was pretty ticked off. More ticked off were the people that followed his advice and, you know, probably follow him on Twitter and kiss his butt. But I know better. I don't listen to anything this uh, Hindenburg Nate Anderson freak says. Matter of fact, when he says something, I do the complete opposite. So just listen to some of his tweets. Going with Workhorse would be an inordinate risk for USPS, which is already in financial distress and doesn't have the luxury to make speculative bets on new emerging companies. Well, what are their other options? Ford, with their non-electric vehicles? We think the July 14th USPS big deadline will just be an empty event. We predict USPS will not engage with Workhorse in any material way, and the stock will just bleed out over the coming weeks and months. Now, for those of you who don't recall, July 14th was the deadline for all the companies to submit their bids. Now, Nate Anderson knew this, of course, so he tried to take advantage of this by basically posting a bunch of crap on his Twitter account to his followers, stating that on the deadline of July 14th, nothing would happen, and he was hoping that people would freak out, kind of like they did during this October date, because of, uh, you know, Roth Capital, and that's what he was counting on, was that people were going to freak out, and pretty much the shares were going to tank, and he could profit off of his short position. Now, little did he know that workhorse investors aren't as dumb as he thought they were. So, rather than a big sell-off happening, uh, I believe Nate Anderson got his bass handed to him. Anyhow, check out this other tweet. He says, Workhorse is a marginal 10% stake in Lordstown, which needs $450 million to even get off the ground, suggesting major dilution. Retail investors and day traders looking for the next Tesla or Nikola are in the wrong place despite the recent widespread EV hype. Now, this dude finally got something right. <laughs> that investors and day traders looking for the next Nikola are in the wrong place. And dang, he, he hit that one right on the nose. Thank you, Nate Anderson. You finally said one thing that was, you know, correct. One thing that made sense. Regarding the much-hoped-for USPS contract bid, Workhorse is up against the likes of massive players with already established relationships like Ford. Okay, but here's the problem with Ford. They don't have electric vehicles. And I believe that, you know, with everything that we're seeing and kind of the transition towards electric vehicles and with the laws changing, starting with, you know, California... I think that, you know, what would be in the best interest of the USPS would be to go with a solution which wouldn't require them to make any updates in the next, uh, you know, few years. Because then they'd be in the same position that they're in now. Here's where he says, we're short workhorse because we think there's immediate 50% downside. The company has an astronomical valuation of $1.5 billion despite less than one hundred k in revenue last quarter. We see the chance of winning a material USPS contract as virtually zero. A reality check is on its way. Well, bro, I mean, you posted this back in July, and, you know, there was no immediate 50% downside. It went against you, so we know you lost money. We know you lost a lot of money. So, what'd you do? Come back reincarnated as a panda? I mean, here's what I'm looking at. This dude from Hindenburg Research, Nate Anderson, tries to unsuccessfully short workhorse several months ago. It didn't work out for him. And if you'll recall back to the last tweet where he tries to use that July 14th deadline as a date that he obviously is trying to push on investors and pretty much workhorse traders as a date that he wants them to believe that the contract should be awarded. Now, we all know that 
this is kind of what the panda was doing because right before that October date that Roth Capital announced or that Roth Capital made everybody think was going to be the announcement of the contract date. But anybody that did some DD knew that the contract wasn't expected on that date. That was just a speculative date. And the date that USPS themselves actually gave us in several different sources was by the end of this calendar year. So anybody that's done just a tiny tad bit of research, which, you know, sure, Nate Anderson could have done it. I mean, he can read. We all know. Um, He probably read a couple of articles, came back reincarnated as a panda, because if you'll notice, the panda has no identity, no real human identity that they're willing to share with the public. Before now, the only thing that we know about the panda is that the panda created its Twitter account sometime in 2018 and had a couple of posts and then became inactive for, you know, like two years, nearly three years because, you know, he just emerged now all of a sudden. So what else do we know about the panda? Well, pretty much nothing except for the panda's website, fuzzypandaresearch.com, was also created in 2018. That's June 22nd of 2018 to be exact. And that pretty much lines up with about the same time frame that the Twitter account was created. So if you look at their website, there's pretty much essentially nothing there either. So we've got a Twitter account and a website created in 2018 with nothing, nothing on it. I mean, who else has this panda shorted other than Workhorse just now? <clears throat> I mean, it's kind of strange. It seems like this panda has been very busy, a very busy panda indeed. And, you know, I could just be, you know, just speculating here, but maybe the panda was locked up, you know, in zoo, in, in the zoo, and, uh, couldn't get out to uh, do his research and write those big worded articles and, uh, you know, make his little short reports. So maybe that's what happened. I don't know. But who's going to trust a panda that's been locked up in the zoo for two years and just got out? I mean, come on, panda. Give yourself a little bit of extra time before, you know, starting work again. So here's my conclusion. The panda is directly related to Nate Anderson of Hindenburg Research. It could very well even be Nate Anderson himself of Hindenburg Research, which would explain why, you know, the panda website and also the Twitter account hadn't been updated in two years until now. And it would also explain why Nate Anderson is tagging the panda in his tweets So basically, you know, he's got a fake account that's helping him promote his, uh, you know, short ideas, I guess you could call them. That's my thesis. And if it's not Nate Anderson himself, maybe it's one of his buddies, because I know in the past, Nate Anderson and his buddies used to get together and pull the same kind of crap to where, you know, one would short a company, the other one would come in and kind of reinforce the entire uh, thesis there. And they would kind of tag team a company in order to scare people, get a big drop and profit. So that's kind of how I'm looking at this situation here. I would like to hear your thoughts, opinions, you know, anybody that has one please leave it in the comments below. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Uh, You know, what's your thesis? Let me know. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. You've made it to the end of the video. If you found this video helpful, I ask that you help this channel out by smashing that like button as it motivates me to keep making videos just like this one every single day. If you're not a subscriber, you should consider subscribing as I publish valuable content like this daily. 
you can do so from your screen right now. And if you want to check out more of my videos, you can click on the video that you'd like to see on your screen right now. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.